Psalm 85, Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people. Righteousness will go before our Lord and will make a path for his steps. Let me hear what the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people. As we light the second Advent candle, hear these words of enlightenment. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. You have sent us prophets and messengers throughout the centuries, voices calling out into the wilderness and shining light on the path to you. As we light these candles in our homes, may they illuminate the darkness of our world, shining forth as a reminder to your faithfulness your patience, and your love, that we too may share your message of hope with all those we meet. Amen. say together the prayer of the day. Holy Lord, through the, the ancient, ancient prophets, prophets you, you cry out, out to us to prepare the way, but our, our hearts are weary as we struggle to stay awake and to prepare to receive you. Help us to begin to feel your comfort now. Lift up our valleys and make low the mountains that are in our paths. Help us to stay strong and to, to not, not grow faint, faint as, as we, we wait, wait for you to reveal your glory to us. In the, in the name, name of, of your Son, Son Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Savior of the nations, come. Virgin Son, make here your home. Marvel now, O heaven and earth. God has chosen such a birth. Not by human flesh and blood, but the mystic breath of God was the word of God. good morning. This children's time is called a messenger sent from God. So each time you hear the bell, you say, hear ye, hear ye, listen. 
Hear ye, hear ye. Ready? Here we go. Before the days of printed newspapers, town criers walked through the streets ringing a bell. Hear ye, hear ye. Then they shouted out the news from every street corner, announcing the time of town meetings and other items of interest to the people. Hear ye, hear ye. Today, people get the news in many different ways. Some rely on newspapers, some get the news from the internet, and others get the news by listening to the radio. Probably the main way that people get the news today is by watching television. No matter how you get the news, it is important to know what is going on in the world around us. Hear ye, hear ye. Long before Jesus was born, God spoke through the prophet Isaiah to tell how he would spread the news of the coming of the Messiah. Hear ye, hear ye. This is what God said through Isaiah. I will send my messenger to prepare the way. He will be a voice of one crying in the desert. Prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. Clear the road for him. John the Baptist was the messenger that God chose to bring this good news to his people. Hear ye, hear ye. John the Baptist was very popular and had a great following, but he always told the people about Jesus. Someone is coming soon who is greater than I am. He said, he is so much greater that I am not even worthy to stoop down and untie the straps on his sandals. Yes, John was faithful in bringing the news to the people. Hear ye, hear ye. It's been 2,000 years since God sent his son, but God still needs messengers to spread the news. This year, as we celebrate our Savior's birth, won't you be God's messenger to share the good news with others? Hear ye, hear ye. So let's bow our head and pray. Dear God, we thank you for this special time of the year when we celebrate the birth of Jesus. There are many who don't know about Jesus. Help us to be your messengers and share the good news in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you and have a wonderful week. Our gospel today is from Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. Mark says, The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I, by, I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, as we heard Mark's Gospel, you wouldn't know that we are in the middle of Advent and we are looking ahead to the birth of the Christ child on Christmas. 
you wouldn't know that unless you could discern it, unless you could identify it in the first word of, of Mark's gospel, beginning. Mark says, the beginning of the good news. So maybe in beginning, in that word, we can see the birth of the Christ child because the birth of a child, of course, is a, is a wonderful new beginning. Our nephew and his wife just had a baby, Luke Stephen, about three weeks ago. And so they know firsthand the meaning of beginning. And so Mark says that this beginning of the good news is about Jesus Christ. And even though Mark's gospel begins with Jesus as a full-grown adult, we can still understand the baby, the Christ child, the new beginning that is God coming to us. Because Jesus is this good news, Jesus himself. And our our Advent season, our leading up to Christmas, this is not an end. It's not a climax of a season. Instead, it is a beginning. We, the rest of the way we do Christmas is kind of climaxes and comes to an end at Christmas, but not the birth of this Christ child. We open our gifts, we uh, take down the tree after Christmas, we put away the lights. That's the end of this season for us. But I invite you to see Christmas and Jesus Christ and his birth as a beginning. The nature of this beginning, of this good news for Mark, is explained in Jesus' baptism, which happens right away in chapter 1. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. And so this beginning is about God coming to us. It's about Emmanuel, God with us. And then as Jesus right away begins his ministry, he says the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Believe, in other words, in this beginning and where we are headed. This beginning leads us somewhere. We are on a journey. The beginning is just the beginning. So where are we headed now? So for Mark, the beginning of this good news is the beginning of God's saving work in and through Jesus. It is also the beginning of our calling to carry on this work, to be the vessels that embody God's grace and love for the world. We learned this week that some of us um, came across somebody that said, yes, we are vessels, but we are rusty vessels. We're pretty rusty, and yet God works through us for God's saving work, God's love for the world. Now, as we think about this, consider the importance of location. We hear in in other areas that location is very important, and I would say it's important here as well. John is baptizing, Jesus comes and is baptized at the Jordan River, and understanding what this means, this Jordan River, how that is significant, how that is important, is important for our understanding this good news and what God is up to and what Jesus has come to do. So remember, the Jordan River is what the people crossed from the wilderness to get into the promised land. Those of us reading through the Bible this year have come across that story, and as we continue reading in the Old Testament That story is told again and again and again. It's important for the people to remember this story so they are constantly reminded. And this crossing the Jordan River into the promised land is a bookend. It takes us back also to the beginning of this story and to the Exodus where God rescues and redeems and delivers the people from slavery in Egypt and they pass through the Red Sea. So on one end, the front end is the passing through the Red Sea, and on the back end, entering into the Promised Land is also through water, through the Jordan River. So the people are invited to remember 
And this Jordan River would have been for them a reminder. John baptizing there in this location, in this place, was a reminder of that, that story that is so embodies their identity as people of God. The exodus and, and uh, rescue from slavery, release and freedom and liberation. The time in the wilderness that was spent forming a people after God's own heart, forming a holy nation that would then go into the promised land. The fulfillment of God's promise that he had made to their ancestor Abraham as he promised them a homeland. And so now the people enter into that and God's promise is fulfilled. And so we know with this reminder that God is a God of promises and one who keeps promises. Now those coming out to John at the Jordan River from Jerusalem and all the surrounding region, they would have known this story. Again, it was told over and over and over. It's who they are. It's a part of them. And they would have also known that they today need deliverance again, that they are oppressed on all sides, not least of which is a Roman government that had them under its thumb. So they would have known their need for deliverance again. And then John's baptism speaks a word of hope into that situation. Hope of God's coming again to a people who were dwelling in darkness and in the shadow of death. And so they would have known scripture like Psalm 80 that says, Come and save us. And this would have been their cry as well. Come and save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine on us that we may be saved. So the hope of this baptism that John was giving to them was that God had saved their ancestors in the Exodus in bringing them out of Egypt and that God would again work salvation in their lives and for them today, just as had God had done before. And this is the beginning of the good news that Mark tells us in his gospel. From the waters of the Jordan, Jesus begins his public ministry. He begins by announcing and embodying this presence of God with us, God come among us and establishing his kingdom, establishing a new way to live in a new promised land. And so for us today, as we, for example, pray the prayer of the day, we, this, this coming Jesus that we look forward to, this God's beloved son coming among us, we pray that God would strengthen us to, to serve with purified lives. And so think about our own baptism. Think about how we are washed in the water. And at the same time, we are refined and we are purified by the Holy Spirit. Sometimes the Holy Spirit is, is referred to as compared to or a finer's fire. So all of our impurities, all of our rusty vesselness is burned away by the Holy Spirit. And we are purified. Now in our baptism, there's at least a couple of components there. There's the forgiveness of our sins, which I think we are very familiar with. There's also the presence of the Holy Spirit, which I'm not as sure that we know what to do with this Holy Spirit. Forgiveness of our sins looks backward, looks at what we, do, what we have done, the things we have done and the things we have not done. It looks at the rustiness of this vessel that we are. If we think about the Holy Spirit, we can think about looking forward. Yes, our sins are forgiven, and we move forward. And the Holy Spirit is there to guide us and to lead us, to purify us, to take us across our own Jordan River, to take us into a new promised land, the kingdom of God. So when we baptize, again, we use water, and the baptized person is washed. They are also anointed with oil as a sign of the Holy Spirit and the sign of the cross is made on their forehead. So I guess what I'm suggesting is that we, we pay more attention to the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit does in baptism and as we move forward, how the Holy Spirit is in our lives and working in and through us. 
At the end of the baptismal liturgy, we say that we welcome you, this newly baptized person, we welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. And that mission is that we bear, we are bearers of God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Then at the end, we also give a candle that is lit. I think I'll even light it for us. Whoop, look at that. I forgot to light some candles. Yes, they call that live theater or something like that. But we, uh, we light a candle and the invitation is to let your light shine before others so that God is glorified through our, our, the way we live, our words and our deeds. So for us too, baptism, our baptism is a beginning. And as we were looking at this text last week, somebody said, in light of what we are are reading here, this beginning in Mark's gospel, what do I do with the rest of today? What do I do with the rest of of this week and the rest of my life? The short answer is that we imagine how we can bear, how we can be bearers of God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. How will we do this in our lives? How will we let our light shine by the way we live so that God is glorified? Jesus has delivered us just as God brought the people of Israel out of slavery and, and set them free. Jesus has delivered us as well today. The promised land of the new kingdom, we have crossed our Jordan River to live in. We, can, we need no longer live for ourselves and what will only benefit us even at the expense as we step on others. Instead, the way we live in this new kingdom, this new promised land, is to serve and to lift up others, especially those who are weak, especially the little ones that Jesus invites us to see and to notice. So the invitation, the frame, the lens that I invite you to see all of this through Luther sums up in the Heidelberg Disputation, he says, it is not sufficient for anyone and it does one no good to recognize God in God's glory and majesty unless unless one recognizes God in the humility and the shame of the cross. There is a direct line from Jesus' baptism by John and the Jordan River to his death on the cross. The cross is the sign of the fulfillment of this good news that Mark announces to us and that begins to tell us in his gospel story. The mystery in all of this is that God is revealed in suffering, the suffering of the cross, in self-giving love, in a peace of God that passes all understanding that in our lives, in our world, the way the world works As we search for peace, we cannot find. God gives us this peace. God gives us this peace. The mystery is also that God uses us, these rusty vessels, to shine the light of God's salvation into a dark world, watching and waiting for the dawn. So this is the frame and the lens I invite you to see through this this Advent season as we look ahead to Christmas. And this Christmas as we remember the birth of this Christ child, this new beginning, I invite you to see clearly this Christmas, even in the midst of the the very darkness of this past year. And it has been a dark year, hasn't it? I invite you to see clearly the beginning of the good news that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. I invite you to see clearly that, and so that you will believe more deeply in this beginning and where we are headed and to see the light of his salvation shining into our dark world. Amen.
continue with the prayers of the church. As members of the body of Christ, gathered in our homes and around the world, let us pray for the church, the world, and for all those in need. Eternal God, you were there before the beginning began and continue to be there, holding, loving, and supporting us. As we travel through this season of Advent, illuminate our path by the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Throughout the ages, O Lord, you have sent messengers to speak words of life, hope, and salvation to all people. Inspire us to take our places in this great cloud of witness, serving as messengers of your love to the world in which we live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Master of the universe, you call the blind to see, the lame to walk, and the dead to rise. Be with all those who hunger, hurt, and howl out because of the brokenness of the world. Console those in the sadness of loss, soothe those overwhelmed by the anxiety of life, and bring peace to all who are tormented by things in the darkness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Trusting in your mercy and goodness, we bring before you these prayers and whatever else you see that we need in the name of the one who sets us free, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Pour out again today your spirit on us and, all, and on all the world. Unite into one body, people of every nation and tongue, for your kingdom work of renewal and restoration. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
Even as we watch and wait in this season of Advent, Christ is here. So come and eat, come and drink. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, as we journey through this Advent season, we admit that so many of us are struggling with shuttered churches and limited social interactions, and we yearn for a feeling of stability and normalcy. You remind us again today that our foundation rests upon you and you alone. Your words remind us that new birth cannot happen without painful labor. As we move into our week, sharpen our focus so that our labors may be pleasing in your sight, so that all that we do can prepare the world for your kingdom to come. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's unfailing love rest upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.